Hey, welcome back. Uh, so recently my wife was cleaning out her desk and found a bunch of notes she had taken over the years and she hates clutter, but hates technology even more. So I was pretty excited when she asked if there was a way I could turn those into digital text and get rid of the analog paper. Considering my wife is one of three people left in the world that writes in cursive, I considered this an impossible task, but it was also an opportunity to build something in AWS. So I couldn't pass up the opportunity. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I built, how I built it, and some of the considerations and trade-offs I made through the process. If you prefer to read a blog post, there will be a link in the description of this video along with the code repository. Now she has numerous notes scattered across different sizes of note cards, post-its, and sheets of paper. She wants them translated into text so she can add them to her note-taking software. And she doesn't need them automatically added to the software, she can just copy and paste without a problem. AWS has Textract as an OCR engine, so I took some pictures of some of her notes fed it into Textract using the AWS CLI and got back some pretty good results. Now, I just needed a pipeline to process images through Textract because there's no way I'm gonna teach her how to use the AWS CLI. Now, I also wasn't going to build some fancy UI because one, I don't wanna spend the time doing that, and two, I kinda of hate web development right now. Uh, I know there are better ways to build UIs than web development, but I wasn't gonna do that either. She likes email, so I made email the interface, even though I kind of hate email too. And really the longer I use technology, the more I kind of just hate it all. Now, thinking about the process and seeing the basic options, I ended up landing on this basic architecture. Let's walk through it real quickly. First, SES receives the incoming email and an action drops this into an S3 bucket in a raw prefix. An event bridge rule picks up those changes and triggers a Lambda function called the email parser. Now the email parser reads the email out of the bucket, parses the metadata and extracts the from address in the attachments and then writes all the image attachments back to the bucket in an images prefix. The image scanner is notified by another event bridge rule of the new image in the images prefix and then Textract does its OCR magic and responds back to the image scanner with the text from the image and this all happens synchronously. And then finally, the image scanner sends an email via SES back to the original sender with the original image and the text extracted from it. With all of this sketched out, I went off and built it, and obviously I used the CDK, and after a few hours, I had a working solution. I sent a test email, and about 15 seconds later back, I got a response. So the proof of concept works, but I wasn't really done yet because there are always two other things you have to consider after it works. First, what happens when it doesn't work? And second, how much will this cost me? If you skip these questions, you're gonna have a really bad time. Figuring out when things don't work is really easy. Just give it to your end users because no matter how much testing you do, they'll always find a way to break it. So I excitedly ran down to my wife to tell her the good news, but she was on a call, so I had to wait a few minutes. It was only a few seconds, but I was excited to tell her I had gotten things working. I knew she'd be over the moon, reaffirm her love for me and exude heaps of praise and appreciation for making her life easier. In reality, she seemed pretty unexcited, but that's just kind of her personality. She has a pretty flat response to things. Plus this was still her having to deal with technology and she's never going to be excited about that. But nevertheless, I persisted and suggested she email some pictures to the email address I set up. She tapped away on her phone, whelmed at all I had done for her. As she hit send, I watched her face intently, looking for the genuine surprise and glee to hit her when she received an email with her pictures almost perfectly translated. 10 seconds went by, nothing. Uh, 20, 30, 60 seconds, and I knew at this point something had failed. She looked at me confused, and I told her I'd be back, and I ran back to my computer. It only took seconds of digging through the Lambda function logs to see the issue. It ran out of memory in processing the emails. So I upped the memory, and she tried again. But this time, it was a timeout, because three seconds as the default just wasn't long enough to translate these emails. I worked through a few issues, but ultimately a few small tweaks and she was off and working. I have yet to receive my thank you card or the congratulatory back rub. Now the hard work begins. I had unblocked my customer, but I needed better monitoring and better resiliency. Now let's go back and take a look at the code again. First thing I'm gonna do is add some alerts on the Lambda function metrics. If any error occurs, any at all, I wanna be emailed about it. And I repeated this setup for the image scanner function as well. Now, if there are any errors, I'll be notified via a topic that has my personal email address as the sole subscriber. Next, I'm going to review the application at each step in the process and try to determine three things. One, can I increase the security of the component? Two, can I increase the resilience or the tolerance to failure of the component? And three, can I decrease the cost of the component? 
So I start with SES. Can I increase the security? Well, not that I can see. I don't really have any options to restrict incoming email from certain addresses, but if you know otherwise, please let me know. And since this is the only external facing component, it was the only component I really looked at from a security perspective and whether this is correct or not is up for you to decide. But can I increase the resiliency? Well, SES is already a serverless email service and there's really nothing I can do to ensure it stays up and running to receive emails and that's all on AWS. But what about other components besides SES? How about the Lambda functions? If they fail, can I recover from that failure quickly without having to require anything from the customer? And this is definitely a place where we can add some resiliency. I could write the handler to watch for errors and put some messages in a queue for reprocessing, but that really wouldn't catch core execution problems like bad dependency references or something that could cause the entire function to never execute. So I'll use Lambda destinations and have any failures drop messages into an SQS queue. Additionally, I'm gonna update the handler to be able to read and process these queue messages. If there are any errors, I just subscribe the Lambda function to the failure queue and the messages are automatically reprocessed. Now, if you can see the potential issue with this, leave a comment below. I'm gonna also repeat the process for the other Lambda function as well. So can I decrease the costs? Well, nothing on the incoming side, but on the outgoing, I could potentially try to batch image analysis results together and send fewer emails. However, considering free tier limits and how few emails I'll actually be sending, I don't see a benefit to the engineering costs. Otherwise, I can use the AWS pricing model to estimate that each email will cost me just a few cents. So about 18% email, that's assuming about 15 megabyte in each attachment, about $0 for the lambdas because that's free tier, and then about 4 cents for the S3 charges because uh, they're pretty cheap and free tier is going to cover most of that. So SES is definitely the largest cost and only because of the rather sizable attachments, but overall still pretty cheap considering how few emails she's gonna send. So that's it. Uh, let me know what you think of it and if you have any questions, I'm happy to help out where I can. Thanks.